No matter what I do, I just cannot envision a scenario in which I would enjoy the physical therapy profession and find it fulfilling, which is sad because I spent seven years to get this degree. And this isn't gonna be a video about me bashing the profession. In fact, I think it's a very good profession, uh, probably one of the better health professions to get into just because it is one where you can actually empower patients to get better on their own through lifestyle modification as opposed to just giving a pill or an injection or something like that. But I think the big problem is that I'm solving a problem for people, but I'm just not solving a problem that I personally resonate with. Like there's no doubt I've helped a lot of people make a positive impact on themselves. Like they're, they've changed either habits in their life or they've adopted certain exercises that help them to get out of pain, feel better and move better and all of that. But when it really comes down to it, like I'm glad that I've made an impact for them, like I am, but I just don't feel fulfilled doing it. I just don't get a lot of, a, a big sense of personal satisfaction, which was really a, a flag for me to realize that maybe physical therapy just is not the right profession for me. But then I started thinking that, well, maybe it's not the profession. Maybe it's just the setting that I'm in, the, the, the method that I'm practicing physical therapy isn't the right one for me. And uh, that's sort of why I initially started this YouTube channel because I wanted, I've always liked the idea of remote work. And so I thought, well, maybe if I start an online PT practice, that can alleviate a lot of the stress because I could be in control of my schedule. There's no longer any like quota to meet. If I wanna see four or five people a day, that's fine. Um, and then the remote work aspect is really great. So that's sort of what I embarked on. And I found that um, I got that same lack of fulfillment, which was bad. <laughs> so uh, I worked with people for free. If you've seen some of my past videos, I talked about that. And while like, yes, I, again, I helped some of them um, go start the direction of solving their problem. Um, a lot of them I only did one visit for, just for time's sake, but um, it just, again, I, I was solving a problem and it was helping them out, but it wasn't a problem that I ne didn't necessarily, it wasn't a problem I necessarily was really invested in solving. Like I knew I had an answer, but I didn't feel really fulfilled from the impact that I was having. So once I realized that, I knew that I don't think any setting is going to give me this sense of, fulfillment. Um, and, and I get like, by saying this, I, I sound selfish saying this, right? But truthfully, I feel like if this is something that I'm going to be doing for thousands and thousands of hours, I think it should give me some sense of fulfillment. I think that while it's selfish, I think that's a good kind of selfish thing to have. Um, so that's when I started brainstorming like, well, maybe uh, an, another career path might be the way that I need to go. And that on its own was a tough pill to swallow, right? I mean, like I mentioned, going to school for seven fucking years and then just throwing that education away, like, what the hell? But um, I started thinking about why I even got into the, or what led me to the physical therapy career. And while I have this elegant story on on how I was personal training and that led me to PT. Uh, there's also the story of giving up. And so when I started undergrad, I actually started off as a computer science major. I'm really into tech and I liked building websites in high school and I still on the side love doing things that are tech related. Um, so I started the, the computer science trek and really the only reason I left computer science was because it was difficult. There was a programming project that I had to do and I wasn't able to solve it. And so I just gave up. And uh, that's sort of, you know, as a kid, 
and being a teenager, that was sort of my defense mechanisms against things were hard. I quit. And as much as my parents tried to, you know, force me to stick with it and, and just sort of keep the, keep the course, uh, I would throw enough of a fit to, to quit and get my way. And so that kept with me through undergrad for probably the worse. Uh, and so that's kind of what I did with computer science. I, despite having to have three one-on-one -on -one meetings with my counselor, uh, guidance counselor or career counselor, whatever they are in, in college, um, she urged me not to switch to, to exercise science from um, computer science, but as stubborn as I was, I decided to do that change. And I don't have a lot of regrets in life, but I will say that that is probably one of the biggest regrets that I do have because every now and again, I always think, what if I stuck with computer science? And uh, I still think about it, well, actually, probably more so recently. And now recently, I've been thinking about, well, maybe I can enter that career again. And I certainly don't wanna go to college again and get a CS degree. I think that is just a too much of a time and financial investment at this point. So I started looking around, like, what can I get into as far as tech goes? And like, there's coding boot camps that I can do, but to be honest, I don't really, I, I don't dislike the coding aspect, but I'm more like the front end, like working with graphics and, and basically what the user sees when they see a website or an app or something like that. I like, I like the design process. And so I just happened to stumble upon this career called UX UI design. And uh, I'll be honest, like it sounds like arguably a perfect career for me. Now this could easily just me being in like this honeymoon phase of it's sounding fantastic, but it's from what I've seen, it just sounds like a career that would give me that fulfillment because I would be producing something that actually I would feel good about, which is what I want to do. So basically, what is UX UI design? So you basically means user experience and user interface design. And so what someone in this field does is they design the um, the, the layouts for different applications and websites to try to do a couple things. One, improve the user experience. So having just a, uh, I mean, there's a lot to it, but having a clean layout, the buttons are in the right place and all of that. Um, and then number two, improving user retention so that you're making companies more money. And so what's interesting about this is on the surface, it sounds a lot like graphic design, which is something that I was interested in, did graphic design on the side when I was in PT school, designing flyers and stuff like that. But the main difference is that graphic design has to, a lot of that is based off of internal creativity to design something novel. Whereas user experience is actually similar to physical therapy in that it's an evidence-based you're like an evidence-based graphic designer because you have to, as a UX designer or um, researcher, you have to conduct research. And actually, this can be primary research, so conducting interviews of people who are using the app or website to figure out what is it that they like about it, what is it that they don't like about it, so that um, myself, as a UX designer, can figure out the best Lay, uh, the best layout and the best design um, and then have that evidence of the research that I did to support that so that companies will have better buy-in. So it just has, it sort of has the science and the creativeness that I like. Now this isn't something that I can just jump into. There's certainly a process to this so I don't plan on quitting my job for quite a while. Uh, basically to become a UX designer, the main thing that I need is a really good portfolio. And so a portfolio has all the different projects that I've worked on um, and also like an explanation. It's basically like a, uh, imagine like a research paper or a science report detailing 
what design changes that you've made or implemented and then your rash, my rationale for all of that. So I have to make that. And so one of the ways I can do this, which I'm actually doing, is through a boot camp. So it's an eight week long boot camp. Um, it's through this company called uh, Avo Academy. And it's an eight week course that teaches you all the fundamentals of user experience, user interface design, and um, it has projects along the way that I have to do. Now I think in this course they're mock projects, but they're supposedly realistic enough and there's mentors that I have along the way that act as faculty to give feedback and apparently I have unlimited access to them, which is great. But then, once I finish this foundations course, then there's a second part of this called the career jump start, which is roughly two to six months long. And so this is where I actually work on projects, real projects from paying clients, um, which that, asks, so it's kind of like an internship. So this is where I actually get my hands dirty and work on real projects so that I can build my portfolio. And so this is sort of my, project going forward, working on this and seeing um, if I can break into this this UX design industry. It's very, very competitive, um, but there are actually a couple uh, other PTs and OTs that have done this and are currently thriving in that, in that profession. Um, a lot of that can be found through the non-clinical PT. Uh, I don't, I, I think she has a YouTube channel, but I know she has a blog, but in any case, this is sort of my path going forward. So on this channel, I'm just going to be sort of documenting my journey as I do it. I'll talk about my experience with Avocademy and just the whole process, the highs and lows of trying to become a UX designer. So, you know, this is obviously isn't the path for everyone. But I think if you're watching this, then you might be maybe questioning if physical therapy is, is right for you. And, and just know that um, it's not giving up to switch. Uh, I, I think it's giving up to accept something that isn't fulfilling. And, or at least not being able to find a way to make it fulfilling. And I just feel like there isn't a scenario in which I can make this profession fulfilling, physical therapy, so at that point I need to go onward. So um, if you're thinking about doing it, you know, it's not something that you have to quit your job and, and, and risk your finances, but I, I don't think it's a bad thing to do. All right, so if you uh, wanna join me for this journey, then uh, subscribe below and, and uh, yeah, I'll post some other videos soon, definitely sh in shorter span than the last one, um, and we'll, we'll go from here and see what happens.